All right then gang, so in this video I'd like to talk about query variables. Now, query variables are just variables that we can pass into this use query hook which can then be accepted into our function to fetch the data. So this thing right here has parameters. So we might want to do this if we want to pass in query parameters that we add to the endpoint, for example, or just any other kind of data that we need to use inside this function. So how do we do it exactly? Well, all we do is turn this first argument right here into an array. So let me just place an array around this. And the first item in the array is still the key of this query. So that remains as a string, in our case, planets. Now, thereafter, we can pass in as many different items as we want, and they will subsequently be parameters we can accept into this function right here. So for example, I could pass in a string, and that could say, hello, ninjas. Now, if I want to accept that in this function, I can do. Now, the first thing we have to accept, though, is this first item in the array, which is the key. So we have to do that first of all, and then I can accept any subsequent items I pass in. So in this case, we can call this greeting, but you can call it what you want. So greeting inside this function is going to be this item. So I can console.log the greeting, and now every time that this use query hook fires this function to fetch data either initially or in the background later on we're going to log out that greeting to the console so let me save this and refresh and come over here to open the console and now we can see hello ninjas right here if i refresh then we're going to see it just once because it grabs it once to begin with and if i refocus the window by clicking on it it grabs it again because it tries to refetch the data all right so that's how we pass in different values to this function. Now let's try something a bit more useful than just passing in a string like this. What if I want to pass in another argument or another parameter, which is the page number of results? So for example, two. Now by the page number of results, let me show you what I mean by that. Um, if I close this console and then open up the dev tools, if I select this query, down here you can see that the next page of results is page two. So we have 60 items that we can get from this endpoint, but we're only getting the first page. It only sends us 10 at a time, and that's page one. If we want to get the next two, we have to add on this query parameter, the page parameter, and set that equal to whatever page we want to get. So I could pass in a page number right here and accept that in right here, page, and then I could output that inside this endpoint. Now to do that, I'm going to use template string instead of a normal string. So backticks here instead of single quotes. And then I want to use query parameter page and set that equal to a variable. Now to do that inside a template string, we use dollar sign curly braces. Then we can output the variable, which is page in this case two. So now instead of just getting the first page of results over here, which starts with this one, it's going to get the second page. So if I save it and come over here, now we see the different data. All right. So we can see now the next page is three. So this could be any number to get any page of data. So what I'd like to do instead of hard coding this bit of data is store it in a bit of local state down here. And then maybe the user can change that data to update what page they get. So let's use the use state hook to do that. So const, and then we want the page and a function to set the page. And by the way, if you don't know what I'm doing here, definitely check out my React Hooks tutorial series. The link is going to be down below. And this is going to be equal to use state. And this is going to have an initial value of one. Now, when I pressed enter on this, it automatically imported it for me up here from React. So this is not React Query, this is React. And now we can pass in the page bit of state instead of a number. So it's going to be one to begin with. So if I save this, we should just get the first page of results. But now I want a user to be able to update this to page two or page three, for example. So let's do a few buttons. The first one is for page one, and we need to attach an on click handler to that, which is an anonymous function which wraps the set page function and the set page function is going to accept one as a value. So it sets it to one if they click on this button, which is what it is initially. But I also want two more buttons, and this is going to be for page two, and this is going to be for page three. So if they click this button, it sets this to two, and therefore that's passed through into this function. It refetches the data and gets us the page two of results. Same for page three. And then if we click that, it goes back to page one. All right. 
So if we save this and come over here, we can see now, let me close this, if we click on page two, initially it has to load that, very quick to do so, but we saw the loading message first of all because it's the first time we're fetching this and then we see these results, page two. Now, if I go back to page one, we don't see the loaded message, we see the cached results because we already fetched this initially. And that's true now for page two as well, we're seeing the cached results. It's still fetching in the background to see if there's any update in the data, but we're still seeing these cached results straight away, which is a really good user experience. The same for page three now, it's gonna show loading very quickly initially, but now we should see cached data. Awesome. So my friends, that's how we create a very crude pagination using these different variables that we can pass through into our query, query variables. So next up, we're gonna see how to use a different hook than this, which allows us a better way to paginate our data.